feel like I should have stood at the back of the room and then like walked down the middle like I was Diana Ross. <laughs> like, thank you for having me here. So um, I just want to introduce myself again. I am Femi Wright. I am a content strategist and creator. I believe that dope content empowers entrepreneurs. And so everything that I do when I work with service-based entrepreneurs is to help them understand who they are as a business and how they can best um, share their messages with others. So before we get started, I want to give a special thank you to um, Winstina Hughes and uh, Saman Nasser of Youth Diversity Fund for supporting me in coming to work Camp US. Okay. And here's the free resource for today from Pillars to Prompts. Um, it is going to be the tool that I use throughout. So I'm gonna just click real quick. You can do the QR code and then for people who, like I don't wanna do that, I'm gonna show you what I gave you so then you will click on the QR and you will <laughs> download it. Okay. So I'll just show you really quickly what's inside. Um, Okay, so I am going to be discussing something called content pillars today. So that's the first sheet that you'll be using, or if you decide to use this later when you go home. The second is a quarter four content planner. And then the last thing is I came up with 70 AI prompts um, that people can use in their businesses. Okay, so let me get back to my screen. <laughs> no problem. All right. After the connection got lost, so I'm re reconnecting. All right. Oh, yeah, I put it back. Okay. And I'll put it back on at the end, so. Okay. So what you're gonna need today, I'm so happy that so many people have their laptops or their electronic devices open. We're also gonna be using ChatGPT, the tried and true. Um, I also found a really cool um, tool called Content Cucumber. Um, they have a AI software called Juno that we can look at. And then the content ideas and planning spreadsheet that you just um, got. And make sure that when you sign up for it, you make sure you hit subscribe confirm so that it comes directly to you. So I am a big lover of golden era hip hop and it is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, the birth. And as somebody that was made in the Bronx and raised in the Bronx, I feel it is my duty to have this icebreaker start with one of my favorite songs. So, um, you know, there's true or false, I have believe the hype or don't believe the hype, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna go through a couple things. And if you believe the hype associated with AI, you say believe the hype. If you don't believe the hype, say don't believe the hype, okay? All right, so AI is a passing trend, but we need to get on board. Believe the hype or don't believe the hype? Okay, I think you were right about that. It's a powerful tool. It's changing the way we do business. Mm -hmm. Only big businesses can use AI effectively. Yes. It will rep replace the need for a content strategy. Good, you guys are on it. <laughs> Uh, writing tools will make the content creation process obsolete. All right. It's not plagiarism. <laughs> it's murky water. It's murky water, which is one of the things that I'm going to discuss that, you know, we have to be discerning in the way that we use it. Okay, so that's it. Um, before we get started, I want to just 
give a little confession. Um, for a long time with AI, I kind of didn't believe the hype. Right. Um, I was like, uh, what is that? I, I know how to create content. I don't I don't really need this. And then I started looking around and seeing the things that were created with AI. And I still felt like so you're telling me I could get 50 motivational quotes. They really don't get that much engagement on Instagram. I you're not you need more people. Right. So then I went to WordCamp Phoenix and someone did a presentation on different AI tools. And I was sitting amongst a couple of the content creators and they were all like, we're doomed. We're not going to have a business anymore. Everybody's going to use AI. They can do everything. And I was sitting there and I was like, no, mm -mm, that's not the case. Right? So I said to myself, how can I start learning about these tools, and thinking about how I can support small businesses who might want to use it, right? So I said, let me just do a deep dive, think about it, and think about some ways that I could use it already in my business and how I can support others. So if if you like some of the things I'm saying today, you know the hashtags, uh, world, <laughs> WCUS, and then my personal favorite, hashtag believe the hype. Okay, so how do you currently feel about using AI in your business content creation process? Um, you, we can do an active poll and you can scan and just let me know and I'll be using this throughout so we can, um, we can see each other's responses. I hope it works because I keep saying that I'm, my connection is, is reconnecting. So I'll see what you have to say in a few seconds. Huh? Yeah, just put whatever you want. Just write whatever you want. How do you feel about using AI in your business's content creation process? No, it's just you just put the, you should be able to just respond to the question. No? Hmm, that's weird. Huh, okay, well, let's move on. If anybody wants to respond, we can just do this verbally. So how do you feel about using AI in the content creation process? Does anybody want to share? So it, so it is coming up. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. So we're seeing it as a personal assistant. So one of the things that I always tell um, other people is that it is a tool, it is an assistant, and it's an opportunity for us to save time and produce our productivity. It's also an opportunity to work smart and, and not necessarily hard, right? Especially if you're a micro entrepreneur and you find yourself with many different hats on. So I always talk about that there needs to be a synergy online with your presence. So you have your website, your social media, and your email list. And at the heart of it needs to be a strategy for all of those things to be operating in unison. Because this is where you're able to build your business credibility, generate your leads, establish relationships, and then make that money that you really want to make. And so this is the way that I help small businesses come up with um, content creation. It's not just, here's an Instagram post, here's 10 blog posts. It's an actual unpacking experience. So the first thing we do is we develop a strategy. Then we develop a plan. We produce the content. We look at ways of promoting that content. And then we analyze the insights. And I work in this way because I feel like this is the right way to begin reaching your audience, building your awareness and your interests. And then again, right, because we're all in business, we need to do what? 
make money. So I always want to clarify the difference between a strategy and a plan because very often we are using those words interchangeably, but they mean very different things, right? So your strategy is about clarity. It's about looking inward at who you are as a business and then outward at everybody else and seeing how you can meet that need. And when you do that, then you're able to carry through with content creation and promoting and analytics, but I consider the strategy like the heart of it all. Or if you're cooking, you know, you have to have the right ingredients or nothing goes right. So if you have the right seasonings and you lay the foundation right, then you can get the rest going. So developing a content strategy, like I said, you've got to look inward first. That ask makes you ask the question, who are you? your business mission, your vision, specific goals and objectives, and your business story, right? And those are things that AI cannot do for you. Those are only things that you can do for yourself. Now, of course, you could give AI a prompt and say, write me a business vision statement uh, based on uh, whatever your business is and serves this target audience. But really, this is what I say is hard work. And then you have to look outward. You have to do some research to understand your target audience, your competition, indirect and direct, and then your trends in your industry, and what is your unique selling proposition, or like what I say is um, your special sauce, what makes your business unique. Okay, so now a content plan and production. That is where AI comes in because it is a tool. So it's about creating a calendar, posting on social media, sending out your email newsletter, publishing a blog or YouTube or a podcast. It's actionable and it's tactical, tactical, okay? So like I said, heart is important. You, excuse me, we have to unpack who we are as entrepreneurs first. So I want you to, and this was from another presentation I had done, but it, it belongs here. You have to define who you are. Explain the uniqueness of your business. Have an understanding of your target audience. Know your direct and indirect competition. And then curate stories about your business. Those stories are important because without them, you don't know how you're going to make whatever AI prompt you put in and whatever shoots out at you, you don't know how you're going to make it authentic without your stories. So this is what I want you to remember about AI more than anything. It is a tool, not a strategy. We'll never replace that. It's not going to replace who you are and your brand. And it needs your human touch. So if you haven't already, um, if you can pull up chat GPT, you don't have to pull up the content cucumber one. We'll, we'll hold off on that. And then if you have the, the spreadsheet, and then the, sp the spreadsheet that I gave you earlier. We ready? All right. So as I discuss some things in here, and I want you to understand, we're not just going to be going through and coming up with a bunch of uh, Instagram posts or blog posts. I want us to focus on the next thing above the heart, which is working on your actual content creation process. And that belongs, that's planning. So I'm using um, this small business owner, Chanabel Ariega. She's the owner of In Serenity. She's a decluttering, organizing, and cleaning business. And um, I felt like she was the right person to use because she knows her business, but she really doesn't understand content and how to use the content to really market herself and build awareness. So uh, like I always say, so work, 
be aware of your business and aware of yourself. These are the questions, the answers that we came up with about Chanabel. She's a mother of two, a grandmother, married to a Marine vet, faith-based, affirmation-loving, worked in administrative support. Why she established the business, she loves feeling organized and she loves a clean space. She says often, I don't see a mess, I see a puzzle, right? Um, her target audience is discretionary income, urban and suburban dwellers, because if you know New York, like right above New York is Westchester County, right below is Long Island, so there's plenty of space if you have a car to get to those places quickly. Um, she, she wants to talk to people who want to know how to keep their spaces organized, because life is hard and life be life, and right? And so you constantly have to be thinking about how you can create peace in your home. Her direct competition is other solopreneurs, and her indirect competition would be service-based platforms like Handy or TaskRabbit or even corporate cleaning services. And what's her story? She realized after she was laid off and couldn't find another job that she could use this tool that she had from childhood, understanding how to clean and how to organize to support other people. And she realized that she could do it with affirmations and love. So here are her goals and objectives. She wants to increase her monthly revenue by 25%, increase social media following, grow her email list, and drive traffic to her site. So how are we going to do it? We said we would create two lead magnets um, weekly email. She didn't want to take on doing a blog or YouTube right now, but she said, you know, maybe later. Um, I talked her into doing LinkedIn, so I'm really excited about that. And she's also going to stay on Instagram. And that's, that's the goals. And that was the, those are her objectives. So now we're going to start planning. And we started from the ground up. So the approach with planning is, I say you have your soul work, you have your human touch, and then you have AI, and that should give you some pretty dope results. <laughs> okay? So we, these are the things that we did together. We created some content pillars. We identify evergreen and timely content ideas, and then we plan 12 weeks of content for Q4. So I don't know if you, how familiar you are with content pillars, but I believe that content pillars are one of those things that you really need to use to focus your expertise and really allow your audience to be set on a journey, right? I know I can expect to hear from Chanabel on Tuesdays about decluttering and organizing. I know I can get a cleaning tip on Wednesday. <laughs> I know Monday is motivation, okay? So that helps you build that no like, and trust factor. And you can use those content pillars on anywhere, on your social media, your blog posts, videos, even a podcast. And so it's that great combination, that great space in between what you care about as your brand and what, what is important to your audience. So these are the content pillars that we came up with for Chanabel. She only wanted three. She didn't want four. I said, okay, that's fine. So she wanted mindset, decluttering and organizing, and cleaning. And then if you notice under, I put a number of questions for each. And the reason I did that is because I wanted her to understand exactly what she needed to be looking at when she looked for mindset content on AI or when she was thinking about it for herself. And if you have any questions or anything, it's, it's cool to, you know, ask a question. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that three is good, four is great. That's the, that's the general consensus around content creators. Um, but I felt, once she explained to me, I don't want to get overwhelmed. I feel like three is a good place for me. I said, then let's run with your three. 
Yeah. And then for any questions, uh, so that everybody can hear the question, I've got a mic here and I'll run to you if I see your hand. Yeah. I'll take one or two more questions before we move on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you our actual um, process that we use when we use Chat GPT because we did it twice because I wanted her to see something specific. Um, we know that the more specific you are with your prompts, the better outcome that you will get. Um, we also understand that you have to be discerning. And when you're looking at whatever shoots out on chat GPT, you have to think about if that's really a topic or if that's a subtopic, right? So I'll show you what we did the first time. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> okay, here it is. What happened? We can't hear it. For whatever reason, we can't hear it. But all right, I'll just share what we did. So what I did with this is I put in um, three content pillars for a decluttering and cleaning service, helping people in urban and suburban environments. And a lot of different things came up. Some of those things were um, sub pillars of mindset, or they were like, oh, use these cleaning tools versus cleaning. So cleaning is the topic, a cleaning tool or a cleaning solution is a subtopic. We tried it again the second time and we were even more finite because I wanted her to see the difference because I said, you might want to start looking at just marketing your business to suburban clients in Westchester County, or you might want to just look at urban environments, but go to specific areas in New York City. So she was like, no, 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 I want to do both. I said, okay, but let me just show you something. So on the second time, I put in to cluttering and organizing in an urban environment. And very specific things came up, like how to keep a small space clean and organized, um, how to use specific products in a green space, things like that, that didn't come up in the first try. So here's your time. So you're going to use ChatGPT, and I'm giving you a suggested prompt in pink. Create three to four content pillars for insert your business type, servicing your target audience, and their challenge, need, desire. So I'll give you, the example is under it. Create three to four content pillars for a digital marketing agency servicing tech startups needing to understand the importance of content marketing. So I give you five minutes. Can you tell me when the five minute mark is up? And I would have had you share on the Slido, but since it's not, it's not working effectively, we can just, if somebody wants to share out, I would appreciate it. I've been pretty skeptical, so this was cool. <laughs> uh, I did it for a client instead of for our, our, my agency. So it was create three to four content pillars for an educational nonprofit service, servicing teachers who work with disabled students. Mm -hmm. And I got inclusive teaching strategies, professional development, personal stories and case studies, and resource hub. Okay. And with, with like extensive like descriptions of what those four could contain. So I always say look at the descriptions too, because yeah. sometimes when you look in the descriptions, you will see things that you can pull out and use. Yeah. So the inclusive teaching strategies mm -hmm. is definitely one. I wouldn't make professional development a pillar I would make that a subtopic within whatever. Whatever the more specific top, yeah. And then personal I, stories and case studies. I, hmm, I I always just put that as a subtopic. 
But if you feel like it is something that will have to stand on its own, then I say in this case, if, if you feel strongly that we're going to develop a number of stories around XYZ, then make it its own pillar, mm -hmm. right? Um, what else came up? And then the resource hub, which is actually what the whole website is going to right. ultimately be, but it's a brand new organization, so no one knows about it to come there for resources. So we're going to have to market it um, I as a resource be, hub. So I would take resource hub again and go back into chat GPT and put specific resources for, and then if you have specific disabilities or specific um, mm -hmm. things that you need to look at, I would put that in. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Anybody else wanna give it a shot or no? We good? All right. So let's move. Oh, these are something. Oh, that was from before. Look at that. All right, so now we're gonna move on. We've got our content pillars three to four, and now we're gonna create what's called evergreen content. So that's content that you can be using anytime, anywhere, right? It's sharing your expertise, again, building that awareness and interest. You'll be driving traffic to your site or in your sales funnel or making people consistently come back to your posts on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook or X, wherever you are, and improve your search engine rankings. So in Serenity, we looked at two different tools. The first one was Evergreen Topics for In Serenity on ChatGPT, and the other one was ContentCucumber.com. So that site is a site um, these guys set up pretty much an agency, excuse me, where they are using AI to develop content for small businesses, but then they have a team of writers and editors who make it real to the writers. But they also have this tool on their site called Juno, which allows them, you, to put in your website and then they will send you a list of blog post ideas with an outline, a blog post, and social media blurbs. So I looked at both. I hope it works this time. We'll see. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll just move on. Nope, not going to work. Okay, so what I found in the evergreen content was that you have to put in something very specific. So evergreen topic ideas about decluttering for, and then you put your target audience, and it will spit out the answers. If you just say evergreen topics for a cleaning service, you're going to get a ton of things, and then you still have to sift through on Content Cucumber, and I, I suggest you go and try them out, their Juno, their Juno um, AI. Um, they will give you an outline. The outline is really extensive because they want you to write like a thousand word blog post, which I feel like is way too much. But you can take each bullet, and that's actually an Instagram or a LinkedIn post. And so that's what we did. I said, look at these, see which ones you could be using in your business. And we took those and we put them on her content slide. So we are going to create some evergreen content together. Now that you have your content pillars, I want you to put in this prompt. Share evergreen content ideas for insert your business type and the content pillar, servicing your target audience, and their challenge. 30. And then I'll give you five minutes um, to see what comes up. While you're looking at these topics, I want you to really think about which ones are the best ones for your target audience and your brand. All right, does anyone wanna 
share since I, my Slido doesn't work. <laughs> We're in this room with no connection to the internet. Sure, thank you. Hi. I can hear you. I don't, I don't know if it's on. Um, oh, there we go. I was just not holding it right. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, I'm a little bit of a unique case because I'm a government employee. Okay. Um, but I did, I work for NASA. I did a, um, a very vague, I didn't want to use NASA specifically. Um, so I said, um, my prompt was share evergreen content ideas for a government organization emphasizing exploration and discovery servicing U.S. taxpayers who are interested in research and innovation involving space. Okay. And something interesting I found was a lot of these are already exactly what is on our website. And so that, <laughs> that makes me a little concerned that what if your business is similar to another person's business wouldn't the AI just pull exactly from them? So that's the thing about AI. It generates information from the internet. And so you remember when I asked the question in the beginning of is plagiarism or not? And we were like, this is murky water. Well, this is one of those moments when you realize, yeah, I could be pretty much pulling up information that already exists on someone's site. So as an entrepreneur, that's why you can't just pull that content and use it because if someone comes to sue you, you can't say, oh, well, I didn't know it was chat GPT, right? That, that's not going to fly. So, yeah. Yes. You mean in terms of SEO or in terms of, hmm, I'm not really... Honestly, I'm not certain. Um, I would think that the more um, authentic your content is, or the more different it is, the more it will stand out in a search ranking because it's not the same as what everybody else is generating or using, rather. Yeah. Anybody else want to go or can we move on? Or you have any questions about evergreen content? Okay. All right, so now we're going to move into timely content. I also call it seasonal. So it is current events, holidays, and it allows you to use it to connect to your knowledge on the subject. So today is Women's Equality Day. I did a, a LinkedIn post on women's equality um, because I am a small business owner and clearly a woman. And so, um, you know, I felt like it was something really important to talk about. Um, current trends in your industry or a specific holiday. So um, when we did seasonal cleaning tips for In Serenity, it was very hard. And the reason why was because um, all of the cleaning tips were about cleaning outdoors, like moving from the, when you put in moves from summer to fall, it's about transitioning your home from um, the summer to the winter. So indoor act, outdoor activities to indoor activities, um, cleaning an HVAC, things like that. Most people that live in New York don't have HVACs and yeah, no. So it really wasn't anything that really resonated with her, um, her target audience. So then we had to be even more specific. We had to put Thanksgiving cleaning tips and then things came up. We had to put in holiday cleaning, um, like Christmas cleaning tips or Christmas organizing tips. And even then, when we were looking at the list, we had to sift through it and we had to be looking at um, putting the prompts on different parts of her spreadsheet because it all didn't just fit under cleaning. So here we are, we're gonna do a timely content. Um, same thing, you choose whatever event you want. Um, 
You can insert your business type, which your service, your target audience, and their challenge. So I put share Kwanzaa and content, I, Kwanzaa content ideas for a business consultant supporting black entrepreneurs find focus at the end of the year. That is very specific. Does anybody want to share their what they found with timely content? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no freebies. <laughs> So maybe, maybe, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe a lead magnet. So maybe put um, a Labor Day focus lead magnet sharing five tips for who is your target audience? Okay. So that, so that's it. Okay, go ahead. I, I feel like I ignored this side of the room, so sorry. Um, I was off my list. <laughs> <laughs> I can say what I did. I did um, share ideas for an association that represents 911 dispatchers, which is what we are um, in honor of Veterans Day, mm -hmm. because a lot of veterans are actually 911 dispatchers and back and forth. And it gave some really nice ideas about combining the two. We do recognize Veterans Day on our site, but about reaching out to veterans, about talking about the same, the PTSD issue. So there were a number of things when I went, ah, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Okay, so we gave you stories, right? Which are very important. Um, and it also gave you an idea to talk about an issue, PTSD. Great. Anybody else or any questions about timely or evergreen content? Go ahead. Let me see if I can word this. So along the same lines of what NASA was talking about, let's say you're working with a brand or a client who already has a website. Mm -hmm. And because ChatGPT is pulling from the internet and they're pulling from websites, similarly, I'm getting a lot of content from their website and I don't like what's on their website. They're in the middle of redoing all their content. That's why they're kind of working with various teams. Is there a workaround to get it to not just pull from the existing content that's living out on the internet about that brand that's not great? Oh, oh, okay. So I have the last thing I did and I actually added it last night. <laughs> so it will answer that question, I think. But I think in the case of what you're saying, you remember in the very beginning of this presentation, I talked about the soul work and unpacking who a business is and all of those things. In the case of your business, the business that you're helping, that they, you, you're like, this, all of this is not good. This is an opportunity to go to that to them and say, we need to have an hour's worth of a talk about who you are and why you are in business and what is your story. And once you do that, then everything else will really start to take shape. Sometimes businesses don't know that about themselves or they haven't, you know, like, and I don't want to say like they don't know they're stupid. What I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, um, you know, they just think about the fact that they provide a specific service, but they don't think about necessarily the story behind how they got to this place and how they got to being online or how they got to, to, to actually doing something. And that's really important to developing your content, whether it's website, social media, email, blog posts, YouTube, whatever it is that you do to market your business.
not put in the brand name when you're searching chat GPT? Like, would you just maybe not put in the exact brand name instead right. describe it? So it doesn't just keep going to their website and pulling that because right. they want to replace it all. I just keep getting the lousy content from chat GPT. <laughs> Or, you know what, this is also an opportunity to look at direct and indirect competitors and what it is that they do in their businesses. What does their content look like? What is their voice? Not to say I want you to swagger jack, right? What I want you to do is I want you to look at it and I want you to say to them, look at what your competitors are doing and how they're speaking to their audience and think about how you need to do that. What do you want to sound like? What do you want to share? My understanding of chat GPT is not the scrubbing the current URLs you have for information. Am I incorrect in that? Especially 3.5. I think they set it information. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's actually going to the web every time you make an inquiry. Hmm. I'm not certain. To be honest, I'm a maybe I should just right. Ask it. That's a techie. That's a techie question. I'm a but I'm a content creator. I, I don't think that, it, that is how it currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
does anybody have any questions about like putting together your content on a planning sheet or anything? So now it's time. We've done all of that soul work. We've put down good soil. And now we're going to watch it happen, right? We're going to actually create the content. So this is the prompt that I put in to chat GPT. Create an Instagram caption for busy moms who need motivation to keep their homes clean. This is what chat GPT gave me. Embracing the chaos, conquering the clean. To all the superhero moms out there juggling life's demands, remember, a clean home is a happy home. Let's tackle the mess together and create spaces where memories flourish and smiles thrive. Okay, that's nice. Um, so we took that and she was like, oh my goodness, this is so wonderful. And I was like, no, that's, that's not good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, you have to now use the stories that we discussed and put it in there. So we talked about how to do this, and this is what we came with. Okay, so do you see the difference between the two? She, we talked about, like, who she was, how she once saw having a clean space, right? She, she's, she's connecting with the audience with the idea of being a mother right? And the idea of being overwhelmed and all of the things you have to do as a working mother, but that she had this home and it was the one place in her life that was peaceful. And that's because she spent the time to clean her home, right? And then, you know, ending it with make a goal to clean one space a day. This is a mindset pose. So the next day, it might be that tip about that one space, choosing that one space in your home to keep clean. And she said, your mind will thank you even if those kids don't because we know that they don't thank us for anything, right? <laughs> so here's activity five. I want you to use one of those content ideas that you had, one of the evergreen topics or the timely topics, Choose it, pick out what comes out on chat GPT, and then I want you to make it your own. So can we get 10 minutes for that? And I'd really love if like two people would share. And I purposely didn't put a prompt because I want you to think about what the prompt should be. And you can look at the prompts that I gave you as well. Would anybody be willing to share what they came up with? Okay. I'll have a hard time uh, personalizing this one since I did it for a client, but um, the, pr the client I'm working with is a divorce attorney. And um, so I was working with it, and they target LGBTQ clients. So it had earlier recommended, I actually thought that the recommendations for um, ideas were, were pretty solid. And so it had suggested building strong parent, oh, and it was, um, the prompt I'd given it was uh, for the timely, was back to school. Um, so back, so divorce attorney content suggestions for back to school time. And it was uh, building strong parent-teacher relationships after divorce. So it came up with a pretty good um, why it matters and very specific how you create unified um, a unified front, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought it did a pretty a pretty decent job. Okay. I didn't personalize it because it's for the client, but that did a nice job. Awesome, awesome. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, there was someone else. All right. So I was thinking last night and was like, okay, it can't just be these very short prompts. I know about the bio personas, but I didn't talk about bio personas specifically. So I, I said, what else could you do? So what you can do is take a piece of um, your writing. Or if you're working with a client, 
take a sample of their writing. Unless, of course, you don't like their writing and they don't like their writing. Then you could probably look at your director in direct competition and take a piece of their writing. And you're going to write this prompt. Analyze the stone, style, tone, and common phrases in this text. Summarize the style. Provide suggestions on how I can keep this tone in future prompts. And here's the text. And then you give them a snippet of that text. And then it will shoot out an analysis. So I did it with something that I wrote. I just chose a paragraph and it came up with all of these things like, oh, you're motivating. You're using these type of rhetorical devices when you write. Um, your tone is engaging. It's informative. And I was like, so then I wrote in what is an engaging or informative tone. And so then it, it gave me a little bit more insight. And then I said, write, and I put in engaging, informative, motivating. Um, for LinkedIn, service-based entrepreneurs when celebrating women's equality. And it shot out a bunch of information on um, different tips that we can use to move forward with women's equality, like remaining resilient, um, being good to others, diversity, inclusion, remembering the past, right? So I chose a couple of those and I decided I was going to actually write about my grandmother and my great grandmother on LinkedIn, but it was good because it talked about them professionally and I related it to those, those three ideas and we're done, right? So that is how you can expand it and make it a little bit more personable just than the shorter prompts, okay? So this is what you have to remember about AI. We know that it is a tool. We know that it is an assistant for us and assistants have to be taught how to work for you, the boss. So be patient, always be discerning, and most important, I want you to remember your purpose for why you're creating your content and why you're running your business. So if you need it again, here is the free resource. Um, and there's time for to talk. Go ahead. Sure thing. Which one? Uh-huh. I can just ask Chat GPT, how does this sound? Instead of asking all of that detail and it would spit out the an the analysis of it and give me perhaps suggestions or tell me it's well structured or et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Because I look at it like a tool to just continue to either brainstorm ideas, fine-tune ideas, sharpen it, right. or, or something like that. Right. That's how I believe that AI should really be used for brainstorming. Like it's going to pull out a lot of information, but the sentences will be choppy and it, it doesn't really have any kind of uniqueness, right? That's up to you as the writer or whoever that you have working for you to do. Hi, um, my name is Glenn and I am an SEO strategist and copywriter in Delaware. Um, do you mind if I just kind of like share some things that I noticed and like maybe a few tips that could help people? Sure, go ahead. So um, I'm going to say like I like the like the presentation and I'm glad you got around to the training part. I think I think that would have been helpful um, to know like at the beginning. Um, but definitely when it comes to the training part, some useful things that people can do that maybe not a lot of people do is understand that you can prompt chat GPT to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. So for example, you say like, what information do you need to know from me? to understand the business. And then ChatGPT could prompt out a list of 10 questions and says, answer these questions for me, please. And then you answer those questions so it can get a better understanding. Another thing you can do is you can be assertive in ChatGPT's roles. Like, for example, be affirmative. Say, you are this. For example, you are a copywriter. You write in an informative voice or you write in a creative tone. Say, I need an article written between 500 to 1,000 words. And so I would encourage people to try to spend as much time as you can, like with that final point you were mentioned, in the training session, because that will save you 
a lot of headache later. Because the more that you train ChatGPT, you remember each chat, it saves all the data from each one. So if you need to like train it to do different roles, so for example, I have one set up as like data analytics where it can like scrape data. I have another one for prompting out writing things. Save each channel because it remembers everything in the chat. So spend as much time as you can writing. And I think like from the questions from the representative from NASA, like you were asking like, hey, why is it pulling content from the website? Try spending a little more time like training it to kind of pull the data that you want it to. And then you're gonna start finding how it's gonna give you the results that you want to see. And if you wanted to talk about anything, I'd be happy to like meet with you after or anything. But thank you, good presentation. Oh, thank you. Anyone else? So I really like your approach to how you presented and like walking us through all of this. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with just your particular communication style, um, which is really stellar. So you yourself, I think, are what make the presentation really great. So thank you for that. Um, second, with all that in mind, the client who says, I only want three brand pillars, I don't want four, or I don't think content pillars are important. How do you work with your clients? How do you talk to them and convince them the importance of some of these things in that really fun-loving, generous, gracious way that you're doing with us today? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So um, someone that says they want three instead of four, okay, so then we can un discuss why, right? Um, so in the case of my client, Chanabelle, she said, you know, I'm a squirrel and I'll just go deep dive into everything and get up, make myself a mess. So I said, yeah, you're right. So I know her enough to know that. And so I said, we can settle on three and that's it. Somebody that sells, says to me, I don't need content pillars is probably somebody that would also say something like they don't need a target audience or everyone is their target audience. Right. And if that's the case, then you don't need me. Right. You, you, there's no reason to need me. You can go on another site, like a, a platform that somebody will just write blog posts for you or write emails, but I'm looking to create an experience for you. Right. So I'm looking to create um, a space where you will learn so much about your business and about your target audience so that whether you use AI or you sit down at a table with your team or with me or, you know, whoever, you will come up with the best con content and the best messages for your business. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, hey, uh, great presentation. I just have one question. Uh, what are some copywriting tools that you use in conjunction with, um, you know, doing the prompts? I mentioned, uh, I remember you mentioning that, you know, sometimes you get choppy results. So what are some things that you uh, use to, you know, validate that copy? And so I, I don't use copywriting tools. I'm a writer. So I use, I, I really believe that Chat GPT should be used as a brainstorming tool, right? I believe it's a foundation, foundational tool, but it's it's not what we should be using to write content. Now there are AI tools like um, Cold Schedule has the headline analyzer that you can put things in. It'll kind of, you know, rate it and tell you if you're on the right track. If you want to use something like that to kind of support you in knowing if you're, you're on the right track, that's an option. Chat GPT can look at headlines as well. But I, I firmly believe that most of the writing process should come from you. <laughs> There's somebody else and then you. So I've been trying to come up with article titles for the last three months um, using ChatGPT, other, you know, looking at my competitors' sites and all this kind of stuff, and I've come up with about 50 of them. And I'm like, great, that sounds like something I could do for a whole year. But you just showed something we were writing five a week. And I'm like, wait, that's only 10 weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so a couple questions is what is a good posting timeline for things? Does it, you know, is it five times a week a good one, once a week? And... Um, 
And then there's all these topics that have come up and I've spent three months. What am I going to do next year? Uh, so like long-term strategies as well, as far as timing as well, how you handle that. Okay. So let me just unpack what you said. So one thing you said was how often should you be posting? And you also ask like long-term planning, correct? All right. So how often should you post? So one part of me says three to five times a week to build awareness and interest, right? And to know that you're present. The other part of me says, know your bandwidth as an entrepreneur, right? If you don't have time and you, if you don't have the time to develop a lot of content, find the platform that works for you and develop a series of posts for that, for that platform, right? And let it go and develop your relationships, right? Um, I just think that you really have to think about your bandwidth and what you can keep up with. Or if you have the budget to hire somebody, what does that budget look like? And how can you service? Now, in terms of how long and how far out you should plan, I like to work in 12 weeks because I feel like you can start to see a change or you can analyze enough insight based on 12 weeks. So by the 10th week, you can go into your LinkedIn or your Instagram analytics and look at those insights and see what posts are making the most sense and which ones aren't. But you still have that whole catalog of evergreen and timely content ideas that you could be using to your benefit, right? And so then you can start filleting the next quarter with those evergreen content ideas and those timely content ideas as well, but base it on the analytics. And I do it in 12 weeks. As, I'm sorry, as evidenced, oh, yeah. as evidenced by the attendance here and the questions, um, this is all emerging and we are all learning and getting better at using it. My question is, is that when you approach clients and talk to them about your capabilities, obviously clients have access to chat GPT and many of these free tools as much as we do. Um, so just curious for yourself or anyone else is that what is the response where you're like, why can't I just do this myself? <laughs> you know, so in terms of the ability to create content, create those prompts and brainstorming and continuing to keep um, agencies, designers and developers relevant. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. So I think it's like anything, any other kind of service, right? Um, I could definitely sit down and create a WordPress website, but I'd rather hide under the table, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I, I, I can hire somebody to do that for me, um, or I can work with somebody to get that done. And so this is the same thing. Like, I think a lot of times um, you only see the main thing that happens, right? You see the Instagram post, you see the blog post, you see the YouTube video, but you don't see all the work behind it, right? So if somebody is just you know, an entrepreneur says, oh, I, I don't need to hire a strategist for any of this. I could do this myself with ChatGPT. Well, yeah, you're going to get a long stream of, of ideas and you're going to be throwing spaghetti on the wall to see which one sticks. And maybe some do stick, some might not stick, right? And then you're going to be placed in a situation. Do you know how to look at your insights and create ideas based on that insight? Do you know how to go back and say, these are hubs of content that I've created that will set my, my audience on a journey? So those are all skills that me or anybody else here that's you know a writer or a strategist has. So yeah. There was somebody else over here first. Oh, okay. She'll come back around. Thank you for doing this. I just discovered a way, something that is really going to help me, and not with social media or communicating really with the customers, but I just was able to use the ChatGBT to write descriptions for a product line that I have that has 150 different items, very similar. And so I was able to come up with very quickly some fodder for me to write logical descriptions of each of these, which it's just an enormous time saver. And there, it doesn't have to be as personal because 
I'm just describing objects. So thank you. But let me ask you this, who's looking at those objects? People, hopefully. People with money, with credit cards. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's the plan. No, but I'm asking, what? like, who? who? Who is the target audience? It's, it's like car magnets with goofy sayings on them. Okay, so, so are you going to sell them on, like, Amazon or, or on a right. website? Like, well, it'll be on a, on a website, on a okay. Shopify site. But, okay. Yeah. Well, think about it like this. Just consider it. My nine-year-old daughter is um, all into all of these tweens, right? They're now into skincare and being preppy, preppy. So um, if you have that description written in a certain way, it could make her interested in your car magnets. <laughs> to make her come to me or my husband to say, I need this. Can you give me your card to buy this, right? So all I'm saying to you is, yeah, it is, it is a description, but it's not just a description. I think, just think about your target audience and your process. That's all I'm saying. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. This lady over here. The long list of all that we've created, all the ideas, all the brainstorming, how do you, what do you say? What do you delete? How do you archive? How do you find it later when you need it? Right. What? So um, I, I wish I had been able to share the looms that I created when I did the searches, but, you know, technology, right? Um, so the thing about ChatGPT is all of those searches will still be there unless you delete them. Um, but i when I, when I look at the list, I start sifting through what makes sense and what doesn't right now or where something should go. And I might put it in a bin, like, like a note on the spreadsheet. This could be for later. And just put all of that information right there. So, yeah. Yeah. Right here. I just have a quick question about, could you just share your slides with us? Would that be possible? Sure, absolutely. Um, I think we do share the slides after and it, doesn't it go out? Yeah, it will. So we'll, we'll get it and it'll be on the live stream. Yes. Yeah, it will. I'm really sorry that the flumes didn't work. It, this has been saying connection loss reconnecting the whole time. So um, the looms will show you how we actually look through whatever the chat GPT um, generated and how we went through it and pulled certain things out and left certain things there. Yeah. Is that what it says? Thank you. All right. So I think that was it. I appreciate everyone. If you want to reach out to me, this is how you can find me. Um, I'm mostly on LinkedIn these days. That's my new favorite place. Um, second to that is for me, writes on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>